FYI. And then, can you guys hear us okay? Yeah. Sweet. Let's see the video. There we go. And that's recording. Awesome. Um, all right. So, hi, guys. Welcome to the Tinker Lab. Um, I'm Jonathan. I'm a lab advisor here. Uh, and then, hi, I'm Patra. I'm the event coordinator here. So, um, yeah. For those of you who, who aren't familiar with it, the, the Tink Lab or anything, this is um, BU's sort of like personal makerspace on campus that you guys can make whatever you want in here. It does not have to be class or research related or anything. Um, it's in located in the uh, in 44 Cummington Mall, which is like the main engineering building. Um, the undergrad office is in here. Um, a lot of like, uh, there's a study space in here, a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, well, obviously, you know, we'll show you around the space. We'll give you this is this training is primarily focused on safety. Um, so we'll go less over like how to use the machines. Um, we'll show you obviously some basics, but the biggest thing we'll be focusing on is safety. Um, if you want to learn more about how to use these machines and how to make things, um, either you know either, you can always ask questions um, during during the training. Um, you know, either say them in the chat, unmute yourself, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, otherwise, you know, when we're back when we're back in person in the fall, um, probably the best way to learn is just come in and try these out for yourself. Um, even if you have no experience, uh, come in, you know, we're, we're, we're happy to help. It's obviously our whole job and we just want, want to make sure you guys learn, learn the stuff as well as you can. Um, so with that said, we're going to get started on the, the actual part of the safety training. I'm going to hand this over to Patra. All right, let's go. Um, so we'll start off in the front here. Actually, I'll just show you guys just the entrance to the building. Um, this here is like a lobby to 44 coming to um, and then here I'll just switch out this um, this is like the entrance to the tinker lab so front door right there you can see them through the window and stuff um, yeah and then we'll go inside uh, first thing when you come in uh, we have a coat rack back here so you know, winter time anything like that you can hang up your coat and stuff. Also, uh, any backpacks or any, you know, like any bags you're not going to use while working on stuff, you want to put up here. Um, so it's not a tripping hazard back in the lab or anything like that. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, another big thing, um, I'm just going to step back over here so you can kind of see my whole, whole body here, uh, is safety attire. So you want to make sure that you're wearing closed toed shoes. Um, you want to make sure that if you're wearing like long sleeves or anything like that, you roll them up. Uh, if you're wearing any watches, bracelets, anything like that, you want to take them off. Um, and then if you have any long hair or anything like that, uh, tie it up. We have hair ties somewhere up front here too. Um, you know, if, if you don't, if you forgot any, you don't have any or anything like that. Um, those are, you know, those are some, oh, also if, like you're wearing a sweatshirt, uh, if you, have, you know, have any like dangly laces or, or anything really, you want to tuck them up inside. Um, yeah. Oh, rings, good point. Um, any rings, jewelry. Uh, if you have any long, like dangling, you know, like hoops, earrings, anything like that, you want to take those off as well. Um, obviously, if, like if they're normal, I don't know if hearing terminology at all. But, you know, so, like ears. mine, that's fine. I don't yeah. hear it. Thanks, Patrick. Yep. Um, yeah, that's all the safety attire stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, and then this here uh, that we just walked into, this is the front of the Tinker Lab. Um, so we'll start off with like equipment and stuff back here. Oh, Jonathan, a yeah. question in chat. Am I allowed to come in before the semester starts? If you have a green badge, yes, but we close at the end of this week. We're only open during the official school year. So like when summer two ends, we close. Um, so if you're, on, you're, like, if you're on campus right now and you have a green badge and everything, come on down. We're open this week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, six to nine, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 12 to six. Um, otherwise, we open up again September 2nd, the first day of class. I think that's September 2nd. Yep. I'm attempting to find lab advisors who can work uh, sometime before the beginning of classes. Um, I don't think I'm going to, but I will attempt to find some time that will be open to do training, and I will probably send out an email to students. Uh, if you're interested in trying to get here before classes begin, send an email to tinker1 at bu.edu and uh, I'll try to get in touch with you if I find lab advisors who can work before classes begin. 
Yeah, and um, like that was that was Joe. He's the he's the manager here. Um, we'll we'll let you guys know for sure if we're able to open up before school starts. But that's that's as of now the the schedule. Um, yeah. Any other questions or anything? Alrighty. Um, so this is the electronics station up here. Um, so this is where we have all of our tools for electronics work. Um, you can see pliers, wire cutters wire strippers, um, screwdrivers, stuff like that. We also have all of our tapes and adhesive up here, which isn't exclusively um, for electronics or anything, but adhesives, well, tapes are up here as well. Um, and then as far as the actual electronics equipment go, we have, you know, of course, soldering stations with the soldering iron there, um, helping hands and a magnifying glass, uh, a solder cleaner there. Um, and then there are over these really nice overhead lights. So, you can turn these on, let it do workspace a little better. Over here, we have a um, wave function generator, multimeter, uh, and then power supply. We also have handheld multimeters. Um, and then we also have an oscilloscope over here. Um, so all of these are, are used for, for like kind of diagnosing, measuring circuits, stuff like that. Um, we also want to point out, um, we have these fans here. So these fans, um, you want to always turn on whenever you're soldering. Um, it pulls the air through a filter here, which helps cut down on fumes and, and stuff like that. Um, so always make sure you're using the fans whenever you're soldering. Um, but yeah, things like the wire, uh, for example, or the solder up here, um, these are all stock. So anything that's stock in the lab just means it's free to use. Um, you know, whatever, whatever you see there, whatever you want to use or need for your project, um, go ahead and help yourself. Great example of that is we have this big electronic stock package here. Um, so this is a ton of resistors, transistors, LEDs, um, motor bridges, Arduino parts, wires, um, timing crystals, basically anything you would wanna make for your average circuit, we hopefully have in here. Um, this you know, spins, uh, all, the, all the drawers are labeled and stuff. Um, so all of this, you can just help yourself to, um, you know, whatever you may need for that. Uh, any questions on, on the electronics? All righty. Um, we also have our 3D printers up here. Um, so we have uh, a Formlab resin printer. This currently is down. Um, we were working with Formlabs to get it fixed. Um, we are going to have to get a new printer. Um, so hopefully sometime in the fall, we can get a new printer. And it's still kind of up in the air. Um, otherwise, we do have two working uh, FDM PLA printers. So these make uh, really cool parts, you know, things kind of like this. Um, you can see, obviously, it's just a little little figurine. Um, like Jonathan. <laughs> thanks, Patrick. Uh, these uh, 3D printers, uh, again, you know, all for personal use. Um, if you want to use them, you just send in an STL file. There's a form on our website. Um, and then we'll, we'll set it up, print it, email you when it's printed. Um, we'll take care of all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, the 3D printing obviously is, you know, really, really fun. You can both do really, really fun, cool things like this little figurine dude, or you can make something totally functional on here. Um, a lot of, a lot of capabilities of 3D printing. Um, yeah, that how what Patrick's showing you right now is a uh, a little resin head. Not just up for pumpkins, but that that is an example of a resin part. Um, the the resin printer can do extremely detailed parts. Uh, kind of hard to pick up on camera, but if you're in person, you can see it really well. Uh, otherwise, we have up here just a couple of computers. Um, these have you know SolidWorks and, and all that kind of stuff on them. Uh, Ingles, which is the study center right nearby, also has SolidWorks on all the computers. So if you want to do any sort of you know CADing, 3D modeling or anything, um, there's tons of opportunity here for that as well. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much the front of the space. Um, we'll start going back in the back now where all the big machines are. Uh, first though, we have some more stock here. So these are our stock and tool cabinets. Uh, we've got these two big blue, blue cabinets for all these drawers. These are full of everything from tools like these you know sockets and socket wrenches to stock like our wood stock, which you know has some nice dowels and various other pieces of, of wood and stuff in here. Um, these are all labeled. Um, obviously there's a lot here. There's a lot in the lab in general, 
Um, so if you're ever working in here and you have questions about where things may be, uh, you know, feel free to ask a lab advisor. Um, you know, we're here to help you guys with whatever you need, whether it's finding stock, whether it's, um, you know, learning how to use a, a machine, whether it's, you know, what's the best thing that I should do for my project. Um, you know, we're, we're at your disposal. Um, yeah, uh, you know, don't worry about, about any question being too dumb or anything like that. Um, you know, we're, we're here to help. Also on top of these blue cabinets, we have all of our adhesives. So anything that sticks is up here. Um, we've got resins, glues, uh, wood putties, a ton of a ton of types of adhesive up here. Um, yeah, and then moving further back, we have uh, all of our stock back here. So this is kind of more general large stock. Uh, so you can see we have a lot of wood, um, two by fours, plywood, and et cetera. And then we have also a lot of metal and stuff back here. So the lab primarily works with wood, plastic, and aluminum. Um, we do have some limited steel working capabilities. Uh, we can work with other, um, you know, more exotic materials and stuff, but generally in stock, it's wood, plastic, and aluminum. Um, we also usually have something cool back here. Not always, it's kind of, you know, as, as people donate and stuff like that. Um, in the past, we've had things like solar panels, linear actuators, um, you know, various like computers and computer parts and stuff. Uh, so, you know, check out stock. You might find something cool that, that you didn't even know you wanted. Um, and then oh, do you have a question, Patrick? And then over on this side here, uh, we have um, cabinets or well, shelves for the projects and stuff. So this is all storage space. Um, you know, if you're working on a project and it's too big to fit in any of the lockers or anything, um, you can set your project up here and just put your name, your email, and the date you are expecting to be done with it by. Because uh, generally we try, and, we try and clean these out if they've been sitting there for too long. Um, we'll probably have to do a clean out in the fall because um, it is getting a little, a little full in here. Yeah. Um, and then the next big thing is you can see on the floor there, there's this yellow caution line. So if you come beyond that line, you're going to want to grab a pair of safety goggles and then some wipes here. Um, just wipe down uh, any equipment, you know, after you're done with it, but especially the, the safety goggles and stuff. So these are just the, you know, anti-COVID wipes. Um, so you want to wipe it down and then put on your safety goggles beyond this point. Um, yeah, that's super important back here. Always, always wearing safety goggles, um, even if you're not working with any of the big machines or anything like that, have to wear your safety goggles. If you have your own safety goggles, you can bring them in as well, as long as they're shatter resistant. So like you can see, I'm wearing glasses, obviously. These are not shatter resistant. If you know something hit these, they'd break apart. They wouldn't stop anything. Um, these are, are designed to, to stop whatever, whatever it is that may break you know, or anything. Um, in this cabinet here, we have all of our flammables. So this is a lot of like paints, stains, um, stuff like that. Uh, it's, um, again, this is like all stock free to use and stuff. Something I do want to point out though, for the spray paints though, um, cause we do have spray paint in here is this has to be done outside. So if you want to spray paint, you grab your spray paint and then you come back around this corner here, grab one of these blue tarps and then bring it outside, uh, lay down the tarp put your part on top of the tarp and spray paint. Don't spray paint directly onto the brick or anything. Um, if that keeps happening, we'll have to uh, take away the spray paints and stuff. But yeah, that's the uh, flammables cabinet. Like I said, mostly paints, oils, stuff like that. Um, and then this blue cabinet here is another uh, stock tool cabinet. So a lot of measuring equipment, all of that sort of stuff is up here. Um, we have our sharp drawer in here. So exacto knives, box cutters, stuff like that, and that cuts is in there. And then we have uh, calipers, measuring tapes, levels, stuff like that in there. There are more things in here. There's, you know, taps and, uh, and dies, sets, stuff like that. Um, again, everything is labeled. We're not gonna be able to go through every, every physical thing in this lab, um, but, you know, the, again, the big focus is safety and stuff like that. So if you, again, if you have any questions, um, feel free to, to ask a lab advisor. So this tan cabinet here is just more stock. Anything that's in here should be out in the lab. Uh, you know, for example, this is a, uh, a bit of solder. Um, so, you know, like I said, there's, there's anything that's in here should be out in the lab somewhere else. 
um, if we do run out of anything, you know, say you go to grab some green LEDs and we don't have any more green LEDs, uh, let a lab advisor know because one, you know, we can, we'll put it in an order for more LEDs. And then two, we might have more somewhere else in the lab. Um, so, you know, it really helps if you guys, you know, let us know how we're doing on stock and stuff like that. Uh, otherwise, this next cabinet back here is tools. So these are all of our handheld power tools. Um, we've got drills and impacts up here. Um, the batteries for the drills and impacts are in the back part of the lab. We'll get to that eventually, um, but they're stored over there so they can charge and stuff. Um, so these are the drills. There's basic drill bits in here. Um, they're not any cutting drill bits, but um, you know, like uh, the bits you would use to, to put in wood screws and stuff like that. These are up here, start with the drill. Otherwise in this cabinet, we have Dremels. Um, and then we have all of the tooling and stuff that goes with Dremels. And then we have a ton of um, corded power tools down here. So we've got an electric jigsaw, uh, some angle grinders, orbital sanders, routers, um, and some uh, oscillating multi-tools. We also have um, a circular saw down here. So that is this big one. Um, this is the one tool that we ask, no matter how familiar you are with it in the lab, let a lab advisor know before you use it. Um, we're going to come back and supervise because it's, it's a very powerful saw, obviously, um, you know, and it's because it's so portable, it's potentially dangerous. Um, so we're, we're going to be on hand whenever you use that. Otherwise, with the rest of the machines, um, you know, if you've used them before, uh, you know, feel free to just go ahead and use them, um, you know, when you're in here. Uh, if, if you've never used them. Ask a lab advisor, we'll show you it. We'll show you how to use it. We'll show you what it can do. Um, or if you, you know you just need a refresher or you know any sort of general question. Again, biggest thing, I've emphasized it a lot. Feel free to ask lab advisor. Obviously, you're not gonna remember everything that goes down in the safety training today. We're throwing a lot at you. Um, if you're gonna take home one thing, it's ask a lab advisor. We'll show you everything you need to know while you're here first in the lab. So next up, um, and the first of our big machines is our lathe. So this is a machinist lathe. Oh, sorry. Any questions on anything we've gone over, um, any of the stock, power tools, anything like that? Anything in the chat? Okay, sweet. Um, so this is our machinist lathe. Uh, this works with wood, plastic, and aluminum. Um, and it is a pretty cool piece here. First up, we have our chuck. So this is where you attach the material that you're gonna be working on in. Um, it goes right in these jaws right there. So you have a key, you put that in there um, and then that loosens or tightens the chuck depending on which way you spin it. And you would take whatever it is you're gonna work on. Um, I'm just gonna put in this brush just to show you guys the mechanism of how it closes. And these three jaws are on the front here. Close down on your, your part. You want to make sure it's clamped in there real nice and tight. It's not going to go anywhere. You can see, um, you know, that's not moving. And then, of course, this spins. Um, and then you do your, your cutting with it or anything. Uh, first and foremost with safety is making sure that this is clamped in really tight. If it's not clamped in tight, this is going to come out of there. Your part's going to break. It's going to get thrown around. Um, bad things are gonna happen. Secondly, you wanna make sure you take this key out. Um, this cover here should not shut unless the key is taken out and the machine should not run unless this is shut. You never wanna fall back on, on any of the machines built in safety features or anything. Um, so make sure you take the key out. And then uh, as far as use goes, uh, you've got a power switch down here. That'll turn it on and then you can start and then stop over there so you can see the wire brush is now spinning. You can control the RPMs. You can just use the stop button there to stop it and then change direction and rotation. So now it's spinning the other way. Um, and then this here is the table stop. So if anything bad happens, you hit that, the whole machine shuts down um, and it's not gonna turn back on until you twist this and then it comes back online. Always make sure to power it down when you're done um, and then take your card out like that. So um, some of the biggest safety things on this machine 
uh, come from this chuck spinning right here. So obviously this has a lot of power. It makes over a horsepower, um, close to 1.5. Um, as this spins, you know, if anything, this is why we, you know, ask that you roll up your sleeves and, and take off any jewelry, anything dangling, watches and stuff. Because if anything were to catch in there, um, that has a lot of power, um, you know, could potentially break your arm. Um, today during the, the training, obviously, like, we'll tell you, obviously, all of the bad stuff that these machines could do to you. I want to point out now that we've never had any bad injuries in the lab. No one's ever, you know, broken a finger, lost any, you know, hands or fingers or anything like that. Um, no bad injuries have ever happened in here. The most you know, are minor nicks and bruises and stuff. Um, we just want obviously that to stay that way. Um, you know, if, if injuries start happening in this lab, they're going to shut us down and rightfully so. Um, so again, we're just really focused on the, on the safety today. Um, as far as the basics operation of this machine goes, um, you would put the tool that you're cutting with in there, and then this moves side to side, and then this moves uh, front and back, and then this handle also over here moves it. Um, the, this is a pretty nuanced machine. Um, definitely takes a little bit to get to know it and get to learn how to use it and stuff. Um, so uh, again, you know, best way to learn is just come in and try it out for yourself. But those are all the big things, safety things on our lathe. So we'll move on to our next piece. No, sorry, any questions on the lathe? All righty. So this is our miter saw. Um, this is obviously a big saw there. You can see the blade. Um, this also cuts wood, plastic, and aluminum. Um, if you're cutting acrylic or aluminum on here, you want to be pretty careful. Um, that's kind of, kind of pushing it on this machine. Um, so if you've never done that before, definitely ask Lab Advisor. Uh, a lot of people have got two by fours and stuff like that on here. It's a pretty common machine. Um, I'll start off with the safety things on this. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, it's keeping your fingers always outside of this yellow area. Um, there's no time ever that you should be cutting and your fingers should be within the yellow. You also generally want to keep them at least six inches away. So I'm just going to grab the camera from Patrick here real quick. You can see. When I'm holding it or when I'm putting my hand out here, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a good six inches away from where the blade's going to cut. Uh, that's, you know, a totally fine, totally safe bracing position. Um, I'll have that back over to Patra. Uh, otherwise, you also want to use this clamp over on the side here. Um, so this clamp um, just spins your piece of wood or whatever it is you're cutting sits right underneath it. That helps hold it down to the table. And then if you have a really, really long piece, you'll want to grab um, this here. So this is kind of like a table extender. Um, you can set it, you know, if you want to set it out over there or over here, wherever your part, you know, overhangs, uh, that can help balance it. Also, we can ask a lab advisor or a friend or someone to hold any extra piece that sits over the table. Otherwise, coming back to the saw, um, it has a couple of cool features. So it tilts side to side making a miter cut, hence being called a miter saw. So it goes to about 50 degrees in, in either direction. Um, this is kind of another potential safety thing though. If you remember when I was over here, I showed you, this is a totally fine bracing position. But if I move it over to 45 degrees, you can see suddenly my hands in the yellow there. I'd lose my thumb if I cut like that. Um, so something to point out for all machines in the lab is you need to be situationally aware. Um, obviously conditions in this lab are not at all static. Um, you know, things are constantly changing. Um, so you need to be paying attention to what's going on in the lab. Uh, it's for that very reason you can't listen to any music or anything like that when you're back working in the lab. Um, you should also be listening to how the machines are cutting and stuff. Um, but being situation aware is, is very important. Uh, the saw also, going back to this, has another direction that it miters in. So there's a silver handle back here and it cuts over at an angle. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of ways you can cut on here. Very versatile. The silver handle is right back here. That just twists to uh, loosen it or tighten it. And then otherwise, when you're cutting, um, you want to start your cut all the way at the top, push all the way down through your cut, and then come all the way back up. If you're cutting something that's really long, like this, uh, you want to come and start at the edge of your cut 
and then push back in. Uh, you never want to start here and then move back out. Always start on the outside and then push in. Um, but yeah, that's that's the basics of the miter saw. Like I said, wood plastic aluminum. Keep your hands at least six inches away from where it's cutting. Any questions on this? All righty. And then I'm going to take the camera from Patrick for this next one. So it's a little tight back here. Um, this here is our scroll saw. So this machine um, is obviously a, a small little saw. It, uh, this jigs up and down. Um, this is kind of a specialty piece. Generally, you are only using it with um, wood and plastic, uh, especially like thin plywood, thin plastic. Um, the blade here is really small, really, really thin. That lets you do some really, really intricate cuts on here. You can make really, really tight radiuses and stuff like that. Um, it also makes the blade pretty fragile. Uh, otherwise, to operate it, you have two switches down here. You have your on and off, and then your high and low speed. Um, when this cuts, this blade just jigs up and down, and then you take your piece of material or whatever it is you're cutting, and you feed it through. So the blade stays in the same position, and you're moving your, your piece through the blade. Um, you want to be careful uh, about where your, your fingers are. Um, you don't want to feed, you can see my thumb here is going right into the blade. It's kind of hard to see because that blade is so thin, but you can see my thumb is going right into the blade. So you don't want to feed it directly like that. You want to have your hands off to the side a little bit. So as you're pushing it through, nothing is being fed into the blade. Um, but yeah, that's the basics of the scroll saw. Like I said, it's kind of more of a specialty type piece, but any questions on that? All righty, let's back over to Patra. Um, so next up is our bench grinder. This is uh, works with steel and it's actually steel only. So uh, I mentioned we have very limited steel working capabilities in the lab. Um, this bench grinder, like we said, is steel only. It's the only big machine in here that, that works with steel. Um, the Dremels also have some steel cutoff wheels so we can cut steel a little bit. We can't cut super thick steel or anything. Um, and then we do have an angle grinder as well. If you want to do a lot of steel working for whatever reason, uh, for whatever your project is, um, Epic, which is another resource on campus, they have a lot more steel working capabilities. Um, you might want to talk with them and see what, see what they recommend. Um, but we can do some stuff in here. You could, you could certainly start here and we can tell you, you know, whether or not we'd be able to handle that project. Um, but for our bench grinder here, uh, it's pretty simple for the operation. Um, you have a power switch right there. It's simply on and off. There's no speed setting. There's no nothing like that. Um, and then both of these two wheels, there's a coarse and a fine wheel, both of these spin up. So that starts spinning really, really fast. And then um, you take whatever it is you're grinding. Um, for example, I'm just gonna grab this, which you'll see later more. Uh, you wanna just make sure you brace it real nice against this. And then you touch it very slowly into the wheel and it'll grind away. Something to note is that when you're grinding at this, it'll throw a ton of sparks out the bottom. Um, the sparks aren't, won't burn you or anything like that. They will put holes in your clothes, however, especially if it's anything polyester or synthetic, um, they'll put little holes in them. So we do have a couple of aprons up here. Um, you can put those on, uh, they'll help protect your clothing and stuff. And if you're doing anything else in the lab, um, you know, especially if you're working with wood, obviously a lot of wood dust is thrown around um, you don't expect to stay clean if you're working in the lab, uh, but the, those, those aprons definitely can help. Um, yeah, any questions on the bench grinder? All righty. So next up we have this red cabinet here. Uh, first thing I'll point out is drill bits. So we saw the drills earlier. Uh, we have drill bits that go from this tiny little one um, and then they increase in size to this gray cabinet up to about that big. And then over here, um, they get a little bit bigger. And then they get even bigger all the way to here. That's our largest drill bit. Um, so you can see there's a, a large range of size of drill bits. Um, any kind of hole you want to make, you should be able to drill. So that's where the drill bits are. Um, we also in this red cabinet have gloves. So this is another um, like personal protection 
sort of um, equipment, just personal protection. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. Um, these gloves, um, obviously, uh, you know, if you're if you're handling anything that's hot or if you're using any wood that's splintered or anything like that, they can help protect your hands. That being said, um, the big caveat with these gloves is we ask you do not wear these when you're working with any of the machines. Um, the reason why is that we're gonna back to the real quick. If I was wearing a glove on the miter saw, um, it's not gonna stop me, you know, if, if my hands is here, the glove is not gonna stop the saw from, from going, going and cutting off my finger. Um, and then on some of the machines, especially the ones that spin, say for example, the bench grinder, it's actually gonna make it more dangerous. Um, so if something happens and I slip up here and my thumb goes into the grinding wheel, um, it's gonna be an abrasion. So it's gonna be like road rash uh, and it's going to hurt, obviously. It's not gonna feel good. But if I'm wearing a glove, what's gonna happen is it's gonna catch the threads of this glove and it's gonna pull my whole hand into there. Um, you'll probably end up breaking a thumb, um, dislocating it. You're gonna see a lot, you know, a lot worse injuries if you're wearing a glove. So if you're using any of the machines, you should not be wearing any of the gloves. Um, you know, usually you're using these again if you're like handling a part that got hot for some reason, or if you have a piece of wood that's really splintery before you sand it down. Um, if you're using hand tools like a hammer or something like that, um, certainly you can wear a glove. But yeah. Uh, and then next up, we have our biggest machine, our NC mill. So this is obviously a very intimidating sort of machine. It's very large, um, but it is very cool. For those of you who don't know, um, a mill is something that uses these mill bits here, uh, which you can see looks kind of like a drill bit, but a drill bit only cuts downwards. A mill bit cuts in all three directions. So you can go downwards and then you can go side to side, front and back, any which way you want to go. Um, this makes this a really, really powerful machine. Um, you can do, a million things on here. Uh, it's really, really cool. It's also really, really accurate. You can see up here, we have this to display. Um, so right now it's in inches and you can see it reads down to the thousandth of an inch. And then you can also set it over to millimeters. Um, so it, it's very, very precise. It's a really cool machine for that ability. It cuts wood, plastic, and aluminum. Um, the basics of, of operation, is you have a handle over here. So that moves this bit on the Z axis. So it moves this up and down. This handle here moves it on the Y axis. So it's going forward and backward. And then you have the X axis over here. So this moves it side to side. You also have a clamp up here. So if you have a part or anything like that, it can go right here. And then this will clamp it down and hold it in place. If your part is too small for this clamp, we have an aluminum bench over here. See that? So it's right in the clamp. You tighten it up, clamp it down, and then you'd clamp your part directly to this bench with either some of the squeeze clamps or we have special uh, clamps for the NC mill. Generally, you want to use a specialized clamps, but again, you know, lab advisor can help you if, if you need help setting those type of stuff up. We also have one more lever down here. Um, this raises and lowers the, the whole table. So I'm lowering it right now. So if you had a part that was really tall, you could lower it. If you had a part that was you know, really short, you could bring it up. Um, otherwise, uh, this here turns on the mill. So you pull this down to turn it on, um, and then the blade spins up. You never want to push it upwards because that'll turn the bit in the wrong direction. It's in reverse then. Um, so you always want to make sure you're pulling it down. The machine also. Um, has some, some cool programmable capabilities. So you can see this, we have this uh, electronics piece up here. Um, you can go into program and you can program in circles. Uh, so I'm just gonna click through a circle on here just to show you guys. So you can see a circle has come up on the program. And if I were to hit run, it would go in and make the circle with a radius of five inches. Really, really cool. Um, and it has, it does a lot of things. So you can do rectangles, circles, uh, a series of lines. You can line corners. 
um, it's cool party trick is you can do lettering on it as well. So there's an open and close sign out front. You might have saw it when we were showing off the lobby. Um, that was done on the Encino in acrylic. Um, it's a really, really cool starting project. Uh, if you've never worked with Arduinos or an Encino before, great way to learn both. Um, it's really fun to get a really, really cool um, light up sign afterwards. Um, so if you guys want to learn any of this stuff, uh, ask a lab advisor. We can show you how to do the acrylic sign project. Super cool. Um, but yeah, that's, this is the NC mill. Um, the safety things on the NC mill, uh, start with like most of the machines clamping down your part. So you want to make sure whatever it is, is clamped in either the vice or on this uh, aluminum bench really well. Um, if your part isn't secured in there, you know, there's a potential for it to get, to get picked up by the bit and like, you know, start to spin, get thrown around the lab or anything like that. Hatchers reminding you to wear eye protection. Um, now, uh, another thing is the bit. So obviously, of course, this is gonna be spinning up. Um, there's never any reason why your hand should be ever near this bit when you're working on the NC mill. Um, Patrick, you wanna go to the wide angle. Um, whenever you're using this, you either should be having your hands on the wheels and uh, manually adjusting where the table is and cutting with this, or if you set up a program, you should be pulling off your part with the air hose here, um, keeping the chips away, keeping the bit cool. And, you know, ideally having a hand somewhere around the table stop in case anything goes wrong, you can quick hit that and the whole, the whole thing stops. Just like the way you hit that and then you twist it and turn it off. That's how most table stops work. Um, but yeah, there's never any reason your hand should be near the bit, but that is of course a safety concern. You know, obviously if, if you were to put your hand near the bit or anything like that, it's it's gonna cut just like any other machine will. Um, another more minor type thing is when the program is moving, you can see these handles spin. Um, obviously they're not gonna like cut your hand off or anything like that, but if you're not aware of the picture right near them, it'll bump you, it'll give you a decent bruise because these motors have a ton of force. Um, so again, be situation aware, be aware of where your hips are, where your hands are, where all of that stuff is relative to the NC mill. Um, yeah, that's our NC mill. Any questions on this? All righty. Uh, we have our vacuums back here. These are our shop vacs. Um, obviously, it's a vacuum. Uh, you should always clean up after yourself whenever you're done with the project, um, you know, or as you're working. Uh, it's not the lab advisor's job to clean up after you guys. Um, so, you know, please make sure you're taking care of your messes and stuff that you make. Otherwise, right here, we have our drill press. So this, we went from our, our most complicated, most complex machine to our simplest. This drills. Um, it's got a couple of things here. So first up, this is the table lock back there. So this table moves side to side and then up and down. So, um, you can put your part that you want to drill on here, and then you can either use these vice grips or some of either our squeeze clamps or C clamps um, to secure your part to this table. And then to use it, you've got the power switch there, so that turns it on. And then this handle over here brings it down. Um, you want to make sure, of course, that your part is clamped down well onto this table. Um, and then you want to make sure when you're, you're drilling, you're going nice and slow, um, feeling, you know, making sure the bit isn't working too hard and then letting this back up slowly. Uh, the drill bit is, is, or the drill press is very straightforward to use. Um, another very important safety thing is that whenever you're putting your drill bit in, I'm going to, Whenever you're putting your drill bit in, um, you want to make sure first that you get it centered. Uh, it's pretty easy to accidentally put it over on the edge. So you can see as the drill bit spins there, it's not centered at all. Obviously, that's not going to drill very well. Um, so make sure it gets nice and centered in the chuck there. And then tighten it down real good with this key here. So that spins and tightens up the chuck. And then make sure you take this key out. Um, it's kind of like the lathe where if you leave it in there, it could throw it out at you. Unlike the lathe, however, there's no built-in safety feature here. So if you accidentally leave the key here and, and then turn on the machine, it will throw it. 
Um, again, like that's not going to kill you or anything, but it could bruise you. Um, you know, we're, we're obviously always want to do things proper in here. It's definitely a safety hazard. So make sure you take the key out and then put the drill bit, put the drill bits back when you're done. That kind of goes with any of the tools and stuff you're using. Um, you know, again, clean up after yourself, put tools back, um, all of that sort of stuff. So next up here, we have our bandsaw. Um, oh, sorry, the drill press cuts wood, plastic, and aluminum. Uh, and then sort of the, uh, the bandsaw does wood, plastic, and aluminum. Um, the bandsaw here, we've got a fence. Um, so this raises up and down. You want to set this right above whatever part it is you're working on. And then the bandsaw is pretty straightforward as far as operation goes. You've got a start and a stop over here, green start, red stop. Um, you turn it on, and then just like the scroll saw, you feed your piece through. Um, the Unlike the scroll saw, you can't make as such tight corners on here. You can turn a little bit as you're cutting, um, but generally it's, it's, this is designed for more straighter cuts. Um, we also have this stick back here. So this sits right in there and helps you feed your piece through. It also has, if you have a really, really tight piece, you can turn it around backwards and you can feed it right into the blade. Just like the scroll saw, you never want to feed where your hand, your thumb is going into the blade. So I'm just gonna grab this right here. So you can see, I never want to feed like this where my thumb may get fed into the blade afterwards. You always want to make sure your hand is off to the side as you're cutting. Any questions on the bandsaw? All righty. Next up, we have the belt sander. Um, so this has a belt up top that spins and sands, and then you have a disc down here. Uh, unfortunately, this broke, uh, the disc part broke uh, a week or so ago. Um, we're working on getting parts for it um, to get it fixed and stuff. Uh, but normally this disc has sandpaper on it as well and sands down your part. This is for wood only. Um, you can do some basic aluminum on here, but you kind of have to be more skilled and you have to um, know what you're doing with it. Generally it's wood only on the, the belt sander. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of used more for, you know, finishing down a part once you've already cut your wood, you know, to whatever length you want or anything like that, you finish up on the belt sander. Safety wise, you want to just be careful of where your fingers are. Um, so, you know, so if you're, if you're doing a part up on the, the sander here, you want to make sure your thumb doesn't go in there. Again, it'll be an abrasion, kind of like road rash, doesn't feel good. Um, so you want to just make sure you're holding your part securely. You're using that. Any questions on that? Alrighty, um, next up we have our planer. So this is another wood only machine. Um, and this is definitely wood only. This is used on pieces to make them um, shorter, essentially. So you plane down the top layer there. Uh, it's very straightforward and easy to use. All you do is you put your piece of wood in there. This handle over here raises and lowers the machine. And you put it in just a little bit until this red piece right there moves up and down. Um, and then you turn it on with that there, you push it in and the machine automatically, once you hit the rollers, will feed it all the way through, plane it down. It's very straightforward, very easy to use. It's also a, a very safe machine. Um, all of the blades are housed internally. Um, so that, you know there's, there should be no way for it to cut you. The big thing on this machine is you should never, ever, ever, ever stick your hand underneath it. Uh, like I mentioned, there's rollers under there that spin and pull the piece through. Um, so you never, ever want to put your hands under there. If your part ever gets stuck or anything like that, get a lab advisor. We'll take care of it. Um, yeah, that's our planner. And then next up here, we have our joint here. here I'm just going to grab the camera again for some passion. It's kind of tight in here. So the joiner um, is similar to the planer in that you use it to plane down a surface of the wood, but you can see the blade is exposed there. Um, so this is nice because the planer only will work on this top side. The joiner, you can do it on this side as well and, and run it through. And you can also do like half this piece of wood, um, whereas the planer is gonna do the whole thing. Um, the joiner is definitely a more dangerous machine. Again, none of these machines are dangerous and you need to treat all of them with respect, but this one, the blade is exposed. So you do have to be more careful with it. Um, for example, if you're feeding a piece through, you want to use both a push stick 
and then these handles here. So let's turn back to Pasha. You can see this here feeds it through, and I use this while I'm over the blade and keeping constant pressure. This is so that way if anything slips or happens, this goes into the blade, not your fingers. And then same thing with the push stick as you get towards the end there. Um, the joiner, again, is definitely something you'd want to la uh, ask a lab advisor for, um, just because uh, the blade is exposed um, and you definitely need to, know you're, need to know what you're doing when you're in this machine. That goes with all of them. If you've never used them before, please ask a lab advisor. We'll help you through you know, as much as you need. Over here on this back wall, we have all of our hand tools. So saws, wrenches, hammers, screwdrivers, chisels. We have more squeeze clamps over here. Um, you might've saw there was a um, part over on the table being held down by squeeze clamps. These are really nice for securing things to the table, making sure they're, they're not gonna go anywhere. We'll also have our sink back here. Um, so, you know, we can wash up, clean up back here. We have this stuff called Gojo, which is this really nice, like think of it kind of like hand sanitizer, um, but it has pumice in it. So it, uh, you know, if you have like glue stuck to your hands, you got super glue on your hands. Um, this is a great way to take it off. Um, takes most things off really, really well. Uh, so you'd want to use that and then rinse off your hands in the sink. Um, yeah, our sink is back there. We also have right here a CNC mill. Um, so this is a fully computerized mill. Uh, the computer runs everything. And it does really, really cool things. Like you can see there's a statue of David. This was done on here. Um, this only does wooden foam. So it's tough to do functional parts on here. Not impossible, but it's tough. Generally, if you want to do a functional prototype, 3D printers are your way to go. Um, but you can do some very cool things here. Otherwise, um, throughout the lab, we have uh, first aid kits. So we have a first aid kit by the sink, by the NC mill, by this door, by the glasses, and then up front by the computers and the uh, circuits and stuff. Um, um, what do you mean by functional prototypes? So, you know, if you wanted to um, make a model of something in SOLIDWORKS, say you're going to build a pencil box for lack of any other good examples in my mind. So you want to build a pencil box and you want to like 3D print it all. Um, you can make a prototype of that where the lid separates and all of that sort of stuff um, on the, the 3D printer. I should really think of a better example. So you just build it with a pencil box. Um, people have made prototypes of um, rocket engines on the 3D printers. You can make like the nozzle shape and everything like that to make sure your design will is you know fitted right and is going to work. Um, so um, those are, are really, really nice to do on a 3D printer because they go very, very quickly and then it'll be something functional. Um, the CNC takes a lot longer and because of the, the limitations of the wooden foam, it might not be really functional. You know, it might be kind of like an approximation, but it might not, you know, do what you want it to do. Um, does that answer your question? Uh, yep. Awesome. All right, we're good. Um, yeah, so first aid kits, um, five of them throughout the lab. Uh, if, you know, anything happens, you get a small little neck on your finger, um, you know, you like you bruise it or something like that. Uh, we have band-aids, we have antiseptic and stuff like that. Uh, let a lab advisor know so we're aware of what's going on in the lab, we can make sure it's cleaned up properly, all of that sort of stuff. Um, if anything really bad happens, if someone, if I cut my hand off, uh, you're supposed to call BUPD, their number is on the back of your ID. Um, you can also um, call 911. Um, if you know you don't have BUPD's number saved in your phone, which is always a good thing, I definitely recommend it. Um, 911 will alert the UPD, they'll also respond. Just make sure you call someone, the UPD or 911. Um, if we have a fire extinguisher up here, if there's a fire or anything in the lab, um, trying to think, there's uh, no explosives or um, biomaterials allowed in the lab. That's for B-Tech. Yep, uh, so there's a new um, biomedical lab uh, just opened up BTEC. You guys probably saw an email for it. Um, there's no weapons allowed to be made in the lab. So you can't, you know, come in here and make a sword as cool as that would be. Um, and you also can't like, you know, if you have a knife, you can't bring it in here and sharpen it and tinker. Um, no weapons allowed in the lab. 
that's basically it. I, yes, and I think that that's everything in the training. Um, we're gonna send you guys uh, follow up to this training uh, a a safety quiz to take. Um, it'll be online, like over a Google form. Um, once you do the safety quiz, uh, the last step will be coming in. You have to like sign piece of paper, um, and then you'll be fully trained, ready to go to to use the lab. Um, that can happen, you know, anytime when we come back in the fall if you're off campus right now. Uh, but you have to have to do that to get fully trained to use the lab. Um, yeah, any other questions? Anybody have, have anything they want me to go over again or, or anything they want me to explain more? So I have a question about um, like either acquiring machines or the other, uh, other labs on BU. So I do a lot of sewing. Is there a, a lab that allows for a uh, workspace for like a sewing machine or that kind of something like that? So I don't know of anywhere on campus that has a sewing machine or anything. Um, if you have your own sewing machine, you could definitely bring it in to tinker and set it up. We have, you know, obviously a ton of, a ton of space in here. Um, We've talked about having a sewing machine. In fact, I've approved it and asked that it be ordered. We talked about wearables. Um, oh, interesting. We love that. I did not know this. <laughs> this, was, um, this was a long time ago. Um, and we actually looked at a few. If you're interested in a sewing machine and using one, um, you can talk to one of the advisors about ordering one. If you're using one and you might find one useful in the lab, uh, we can have a conversation about that. Um, that was something that we did. We have talked about. It just hasn't happened yet. Um, there's an issue with space, um, but we'd have to find out what you want to use it for um, and then make it available. But the other philosophy is if it's there, maybe somebody will start to use it for some reason and think about yeah. something. So, um, yeah, so it, we, we can get one. Um, you can raise it and we can talk about it. Uh, and maybe you might have a, a nice suggestion for a sewing machine. There was a lot of choices and we weren't sure what was the best uh, for the use that we would, thought we could have, but it was wearables that we were we were considering at the time. What do you use the sewing machine for? Oh, well, I specifically do alterations and costuming for theater productions, um, but that's just like me personally. Um, but it's, yeah, no, sewing machines, I recently had to get a new one and there's a million options and they all are more or less the same, but ever so slightly different. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's something we consider. And if you want to help us uh, find one, um, we, we can talk about it. Wonderful, thank you. Any other questions? Alrighty, guys. Well, um, thanks for thanks for coming to the training. Uh, if you have anything you want to stay behind and, and ask, well, we can stay here for um, you know a couple more minutes and answer any questions if you want to ask them privately or email us. Um, Joe mentioned tinker1 at bu.edu, uh, or you can respond to the email that I sent everyone. Um, or, well, use my email that you got from that. Um, but yeah, thanks again for coming, and we hope to see you guys here in the fall. Thank you. All right, you, that went very well. You did a very good job again. Hi, Thank you. Yeah, we had uh, 35 people left. I checked they all stayed, which was very good. As one of them left, or one of one or two of them left. There's five minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. Weird. You can turn um, on recording. Oh, yeah.